Hello, friends and lovers of the JRPG genre. Welcome back to your weekly JRPG podcast. This is the JRPG Report. My name is James Fisher. Thank you for tuning in once again this week. We've got a bunch of cool stories to go over with you. Not a huge news week as uh, focuses, I believe, were elsewhere in the gaming community this past week. So maybe some publishers didn't want to put out a whole lot, uh, especially in our genre. So once I get done with all the news stories, um, I put together a list of what I consider to be my personal top 10 JRPGs of all time. Um, I'm not going to put them in like a countdown, you know, 10 to 1 list. This will just be the top 10. And keep in mind, it'll be my list. Speaking of the Legend of Heroes, uh, like I mentioned, I am playing through Sky. So I was really very happy when the newest trailer for Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 4, came out just a couple days ago and it does feature some of those hairy heroes of the sky subseries including estelle and joshua making the appearance we already know that cassius is in it as well so all the brights are present and accounted for the trailer is a little over two minutes long of course there's some uh, subscribe or uh, pre-order stuff there at the end so it kind of shows um i still haven't Got this pronunciation down. Liberal, I believe that's how you say it, the country that the Brights are from. Obviously, Estelle has grown quite a bit from her sky days. She is now an adult, along with Joshua. And uh, they are kind of in this trailer, it looks like, underground of Crossbell. I may be incorrect. However, they are working with the heroes of Crossbell and the special support section. Um, that's kind of the, the next of this trailer. You can check it out for yourself on our YouTube channel and kind of see what is all showing off. I, I definitely had the, the, the hype level was growing for this one. I don't know how much higher it can get for people like myself, but uh, unless you have not played the first three Cold Steel games, I would say you could probably check this one out fairly spoiler free as it is actually characters that are not from Cold Steel primarily, although a couple of them like Tio and Agate and um, oh, the other girl Randolph is in there as well that were in Cold Steel 3. So, a lot of cool stuff going on, building up towards that eventual launch for PS4 on October 27th in North America and Europe. The second interview in Final Fantasy Portal Sites 3 volume series of Final Fantasy IX interviews that celebrate the game's 20th anniversary came out. I'm hoping that the third one will make it out some point this week. And a little preview, that is my plan for this Sunday special. Um, I'm going to, at the very least, do the first two interviews. And if the third one makes it out, I'll include it as well. If either way, I believe we'll have some decent content for that. But it'll be pretty cool to look back at one of my favorite Final Fantasy games, and it's hard to believe it's been 20 years since that one came out. A return to its roots kind of game, but then I'll, at the same time, some of the changes that were made and decisions in that artistic and development process. We'll share those along with you guys on this week's Sunday special, so look forward to that. Um, whereas a new trailer came out for... Um, Near Reincarnation. This is the mobile game coming out. Uh, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon necessarily, but uh, it was shown, and a lot of people it got a lot of interest over on YouTube from people. And I think there was at least some initial confusion about which new Near game this was. Um, definitely, a lot of people were uh, dismayed when they saw the battle system for it. You know, I kind of just like, well, this is the mobile game. This is not the console game. So I would not be expecting a battle system necessarily like Near Automata. Obviously, there are action RPGs for mobile games. But at least for this game, they have chosen to go with more of a turn-based or auto battle system. Not exactly sure which one they're going to end up with exactly. 
Uh, they did announce there is a closed beta coming up for this iOS and Android game on July 23rd, running until August 5th. Now, this is in Japan. Um, no word yes, yet on a U.S. beta or when that will happen, as this is a Japanese trailer. But it's a very interesting look looking trailer. Um, Looks-wise, it definitely looks pretty solid for a mobile game, and we'll just have to wait and see how it actually turns up, assuming, of course, that we get it <laughs> over here in the West. I still haven't heard a whole lot of information about that other Nier game with the weird numbered <laughs> title, but as soon as I do hear any information about either one of these two, I will pass it along to you guys. Perhaps not unsurprisingly, Persona 4 Golden has been a success since its re recent release on Steam. Uh, just about a month ago, a little bit over a month on June, June, <laughs> uh, June 13th, um, it has actually surpassed the 500,000 player mark on Steam. That's pretty good. Um, there's always been kind of that misconception over the years that uh, there's not a market for JRPGs on on Steam and for PC players, um, hence why companies like Atlas have been a little hesitant to put that out. I believe this, um, and this is only after a month, so sales are only going to increase over time. I kind of believe like these numbers are starting to put that theory to rest. And especially if you're going to put out a digital version, I don't understand why you wouldn't also include that on Steam. There's not that much that needs to be changed. So it kind of makes sense. And in, in this case in particular, why Steam has it still, and a month later we still not even heard a rumor or uh, ramblings about this coming to PlayStation 4 or Switch. I do not understand that whatsoever. Maybe that announcement is coming, but it is kind of odd to say this. But yeah, kudos and a, uh, a round of applause for the team over at Atlas. For finally putting this one out on Steam and it being certainly a success so far. We're not sure what exactly is going to be featured. However, in the next issue of Weekly Jump, there will be, quote, new information on a certain Dragon Quest title, unquote, according to the latest issue of the magazine. This was in the um, July 13th issue of the magazine, so the next one should release... Um, I believe they're, they're saying this is either that first or second week in August. A lot of speculation about what this could be talking about. I would definitely probably put my, um, I put my money on that uh, Dragon Quest jo Jokers, that Dragon Quest Monster title that's supposed to have Eric and Mia in it, um, kind of a prequel to the events of. Dragon Quest Eleven. It could also be information about the trio of new Adventure of Die games that got announced not long ago. I would say there's very... I'd put very little money on either a Dragon Quest Twelve um, talkings about or even a Dragon Quest Nine remake. I just don't think that we're quite ready for those. I don't believe that Wiggly Jump would probably be the right place to do those at i'd feel like those would be a bigger time thing um just to be quite frank with you but yeah well, as soon as i hear something along those lines you know i'll pass it right along to you guys uh there was a new trailer that came out for fairy tale this one from publisher koi tecmo and developer gust features the game's characters and features trailer Character stories are original events that take place around the city and in the guild through which you can witness surprising scenes featuring a variety of characters. By strengthening connections with party members, you can then unlock new skills. Uh, the trailer is pretty impressive and it definitely shows a different array of different scenarios that you can play out in the town and talking to people in your party and other characters in the story. Fairy Tale is due out PlayStation 4, for PlayStation 4, Switch, and Steam on July 30th in Europe and Japan. The next day, July 31st in North America. In JRPG related news, not gaming per se, uh, there is going to be a new way to experience the Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, story, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, there is a manga 
going to be coming out for it. And uh, in particular, the English version will be coming out November 17th. So if you've been looking forward to uh, a <laughs> printed version of, uh, to say the least, a confusing story, well, you can uh, check that out in manga form sometime in November. Equally surprising was an announcement that Netflix is going to be carrying a Dragon's Dogma anime. This was kind of cool. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this one. It does look cool. It kind of reminds me very much of, of Castlevania's style of anime. And this one's actually going to be coming out fairly soon. There was a teaser tweet and poster put out for it. Uh, this will be added to Netflix starting on September 17th. Here is the tweet from Netflix. Only the Arisen can face the dragon and defeat the apocalypse. Here's your first look at the anime series adaptation of Capcom's action fantasy classic Dragon's Dogma. It features uh, the Arisen kind of uh, looking quite dead <laughs> there with his heart hovering above him and the dragon in the background uh, if you're not familiar with the with the game that is the whole premise of it that uh, yeah the dragon at the beginning steals your heart but you are still alive and uh, ultimately going a quest to basically get your heart back at the end but also by doing so there are some grander <laughs> things uh, at play of course so i love dragon's dogma i've played that game twice through Part of the charm of it was, of course, that you created your own character that got your heart stolen from you. So having a character, you know, this version of it is is kind of, it's an odd feeling because it was, you know, I was made myself. So I'm <laughs> personally, I've made myself, you know, a big old kind of chunky dude running around. Um, and it was, uh, I always think those are kind of humorous to be quite honest. The, obviously you can go a couple of different routes when you got a character creator, but, um, we'll see how this one, uh, turns out. If I got a, got some free time, I may fire up the Netflix and, and check this one out, at least to let you know if it's, worth your time or not. We've reported at least once before on the turn-based strategy RPG Banner of the Maid. Well, it has been announced that it will launch on PlayStation 4 and Switch in not too much longer. You'll get it on August the 12th and at a pretty decent price point. It's going to be $16.99 here in the U.S. Publisher, CE Asia and developer Azure Flame Studio announced uh, the release date for the later planned Xbox One version will be announced at a later date. Of course, if you are a Steam player, you can now download it right now. It's already available for you guys. If you've got some uh, money bone burning a hole in your pocket, well, here's a couple different ways that you can choose to spend it. Um, of course, I've got links for all these stories over on the Facebook or Twitter pages. So uh, first up, Kingdom Hearts fans, you can now get a swanky Kingdom Hearts watch. Um, there's a special set of them. Um, let's see, they're not. I'm trying to see who makes these things. I believe it says U Treasure. Yes, U Treasure watches will cost quite a bit of yen, approximately $256 for these watches. I don't know if that's a good price or not for a good watch. I'm not a watch kind of guy. Um, there's also some earrings in the shape of crowns. Or uh, the actual heart from the Kingdom Hearts series. No keyblades. That'd be kind of a cool earring. So the earrings will go for um, uh, the coated one is sixty-six dollars, or the eighteen karat gold ones will run uh, two hundred fifty-six dollars as well. Uh, the official U Treasure website mentions that if you want these things, they are going to take approximately five weeks for delivery. So they look pretty cool. Like I said, that's. I'm not sure if those are good prices or not, but uh, if you are an Uber fan, you can pick those up and um, and check them out. Um, not quite as expensive, but if you want a Final Fantasy VII remake themed iPhone case, you can now get it through the official North American store. These are for uh, iPhone 10, 10s, 11, or 11 Pro users. 
can get these. They look to be, I think there's just the one of them. Um, no, there's different designs. They're all black, but then have at least four different uh, designs. One has the emblem, one has the Shinra logo, one has a cloudy wolf, and there is also a one-winged angel on one of these. So four different versions to show off, and these are going to go for a, a currently discounted pre-order price of 28 Dollars and they are expected to ship sometime in October of this year. I've always, I mean, these things look really cool. I've only got an iPhone 8, so it wouldn't be applicable to myself. But being a bit clumsy at times and having a small child, I definitely need a phone case that will <laughs> protect my phone from hazards or dropping it and I'm not sure how these cases uh, are designed in that capacity. I would have to guess there's a more cosmetic designs and not really uh, practical. But they look really cool so if you got 28 bucks and want to get them you can pre-order that now through the link uh, on our Facebook page story. Uh, just a quick update. I have kind of finished my playthrough of the Genshin Impact closed beta. I think I put in around 12 or so hours into it. I felt like it was a good amount of time to get a complete feel for the world and what it was offering. But I did choose to stop playing. As I mentioned before, your progress does not carry over into the final game. I just I got to the point to where I don't really want to do all this again. Um, however... I'm going to highly recommend this game should they fix a couple of small little things. There was one, there was a tavern in town and it was vital to a couple missions. And definitely, um, as you entered this tavern more than once, the game completely crashed on me. And as I've already seen that, that they're aware of this issue. That is why they do betas for stuff like that. There was some slowdown when some things got really hectic at times again that can happen even in full versions of games so i'm sure that's something they've been made aware well aware of as well other than that i didn't see a whole lot i could really strike against it um of course they did not have any of the paid features in there so i can't comment on what's going to be held as microtransactions what could obviously bog down a free game experience is the constant uh, pestering to try to buy things. I understand that. But from a pure game experience, if you just hand this to somebody and say, play this game, and they don't see, you know, some of those little things like daily logins and all that stuff, just from playing the game outright, you are not going to be able to convince somebody that this is a free game. It looks so good, it plays really good. It's got a really actually deep combat system with needing to play to uh, enemies' affinities and weaknesses. You can sit there and hack and slash all day long and do nothing. You really do need to take into effect your different characters and their elemental properties. Um, shields can be you know destroyed in order to uh, better attack enemies. There's a lot going on there that's not necessarily at the surface, but as you play it a little bit more, you start to realize exactly what's going on. The obvious comparisons have been to Breath of the Wild, and it is without a doubt its direct influence. And considering the massive popularity and approval of Breath of the Wild, that's certainly not a bad thing. <laughs> It'd kind of be like if somebody made a brand new JRPG and made it in Persona 5's style and fashions and kind of took out some like the high school stuff or whatever, would you not say, hey, this is this is still a great game if you do it right? And in my personal opinion, from what little I've played, they kind of do some things better than Breath of the Wild did and the things that I kind of didn't care for. Um, obviously, there's much more production value and um, quality in Breath of the Wild. However... For a free game, this thing's doing a lot of things right. So I'll kind of leave it at that. Once the final release date comes out and I get my hands on the final version, I'll give you a full verdict. But 
at this point, I got no reason to tell you not to at least try to pick this one as it is going to be zero dollars. If you're playing through Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, there is a new version 1.1.2, which you're probably automatically downloaded. And uh, this new patch, there's several uh, changes. Um, I didn't really see anything completely uh, notable. The, they did say that some of the questions, or the exclamation point icons appearing on the map area in the field while using the travel guidance will, can now be disabled. Um, I definitely found an issue with trying to go to certain places to try to do certain missions and you would not see if you were in the right area until you actually fast traveled there and then brought up the map. So there were some little tiny glitches like that. There were certain spec adjustments and lockups and various other fixes. So about, I'd say a good 40 or so little fixes here and there. I did not see anything to fix um, your AI partners either joyfully jumping to their death and or uh, during a certain boss battle continuing to stand in the poisonous pool of ether draining their health until they eventually die. Those fixes were not mentioned. We previously talked about Nintendo's newest Amiibo figures coming out for both the Dragon Quest Hero and Joker from Persona 5. Uh, they are on their way for um, the Switch, and they will be starting on October 2nd. You'll be able to purchase those. Japan will get it a week earlier on September the 25th. These are some really incredible looking Amiibos, I've not really got into that whole aspect of them, but if there ever were two that I was going to pick up, it'll be these two. And I didn't see, I didn't see a price point on these. I'm not sure. Amiibos are usually not super cheap, but uh, these may be, may be the first ones I end up picking up as they look really, really cool. Idea Factory International released some new story and dungeon-focused English screenshots for Compile Heart's new title, Death End Request 2. I believe there was around 21, 20 or 21 new images for it, kind of taking a different look at things, including the city. And I, <laughs> I hadn't seen these before, but uh, one of it looks like one of the enemies in the game or that populate this, uh, the city of Lacrohora. Um, are these giant red and black? They look like uh, look like kind of tentacles shooting up from the buildings and from the ground, but they're very um, straight. They're not tentacly looking. They're just shooting up like spikes almost. But then some of them actually look like giant spiders as well. So it's very creepy looking, and it kind of made me want to say, nah, that's a little uh, too creepy for my taste. But uh, if you're looking for this one, of course, it's already out in Japan and will launch for PlayStation 4 and PC worldwide on August 25th. European PlayStation 4 owners will get it on August the 28th. Um, we've talked a bit about Paper Mario, the Origami King, and of course, that one is coming out in just two more days on Friday, July 17th. And at this point, I'm starting to think that maybe we shouldn't have covered it as much as we did. Of course, we didn't know all these details when it first came out. Paper Mario is a long series that has certainly been rooted in JRPG roots. And it seems like with this one, they've gone even further away in one key area that definitely helps your game become a JRPG. So we definitely knew about some of the things. There's an HP meter on the main screen. You see Paper Mario running around smashing things and uh, then engaging in the combat. We know it was a turn, or a, it is turn-based to a large extent, but it's ring-based and you line up the rings and you jump on the enemies using um, some old Paper Mario attacks. Now, what has been revealed since then, and this is probably going to get you off of the wagon as well, is uh, in these battles, you do not gain experience points. Uh, so that basically means there's no leveling up in the game. And that is one of the core staples of a JRPG. There's a lot of different definitions of it, but 
for me, that's that's an absolute. There needs to be leveling up. There needs to be an incentive to grind through enemy battles. Um, it does point out that the game raises stats by other means, but it seems like the battles are kind of just for the coins that you get, and uh, you can raise your stats via the number of characters in the stands that cheer for you. I don't know. Like, it looks like a fun game. Do not get me wrong. It looks like a good family game that could be enjoyed by many people. And maybe that's what they went for, is taking away some of the ailments that would keep younger players away from it. Although, if you're like myself, you've been playing RPGs since a very young age, and that's not a hindrance at all. But I felt the need that once I saw that article, I would at least pass it along to you guys as perhaps further evidence that this is not really the game that some of us were looking forward to. There's plenty of people that are looking forward to it, but just not maybe uh, listeners to this podcast. And that's a bit unfortunate as the series gets further and further away from Thousand Year Door, unfortunately. Uh, one final story to pass along to you guys. And uh, I'm not sure if this is good news or bad news. And it, it just, it's one of those things that it is what it is. So Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, the remaster that is coming out here um, pretty shortly. What was that release date? August the 27th, a worldwide release. Of course, it's coming out for multiple platforms, including mobile, PlayStation 4, and Switch. And because of that, it has been revealed that there is no offline multiplayer option. So if you've got a Switch and you got a bunch of controllers, that's not going to do you any good for this game. Um, I think that the multi-platform aspect of it, being an online and be able to join in with players online, they must have found that they couldn't do either or. And so the decision was made that that is one of the key features of the game is multiplayer. The only way to make it work was online. They went with that. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> but, like I said, it is what it is. So if you were looking forward to playing that with your family, you can still accomplish this. But it's going to be a little more difficult. Um, you could obviously play on the Switch and have players on their mobile phones playing with you. But yeah, it's not going to be possible in person, which is kind of a bummer. So let's finally take that break. We'll say thanks to Anchor, and I'll be back with my top 10 JRPGs of all time. All right, guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in this week and every week to the podcast. Don't forget, uh, wherever you choose to listen to us, if you will leave us a review, hopefully it's five stars, and uh, that helps bump us up the rankings. You can like us on Facebook for all the stories we talk about each and every week. Follow us on Twitter for updated tweets and other various things to go on. And subscribe on YouTube. Our channel is really growing over there. I try to put out at least one video every day, including all the stuff that we talk about here on the podcast. And if you are so inclined, we do accept listener support either via the link at the bottom of this podcast episode or on Patreon. We appreciate each and every one of our awesome sponsors for this. Without without it, it would definitely make things a lot more, uh, it'd be a lot more difficult to convince my wife to let me do this hobby each and every week. Um, in case you thought you heard something a bit weird at the end of, uh, before we took the break there, um, my daughter thought it was a perfect time to start banging on her toy drum set. And so that was definitely, uh, <laughs> obviously I could hear it here. Um, I don't know how well the microphone picked it up, but yeah, that was one of those gifts from a relative that I kind of just frowned at as soon as I saw it and thought, ah, Anyway, <laughs> what you guys have all been uh, possibly waiting for, but uh, maybe not because you're kind of like, man, I'm going to I'm gonna disagree with James on his here list. But uh, here it goes. And the only way, to, I'm not going to do this like uh, in any order per se of, of 1 through 10. 
let's just kind of go chronologically as best I can. So representing the Nintendo first up was, as you might have heard me talk about in a previous Sunday special, my JRPG history, really the game that cemented my love of the genre, and that's Dragon Quest IV. So many hundreds of hours put into this one. It really just, it, it laid the foundation for what I feel a great JRPG not only is, but could be, as well as uh, many ones have gone off the back of that. Epic Quest, uh, broken up into five chapters, where the first four laid the groundwork for an really huge overarching um, tale that gripped me then and even as I went back and played this on the um, DS just a few years ago it still held that power that it always had over me um, I'm not going to get into too much details on these, you guys know about these games but um, yeah that one has always and will always hold a special place in my heart. That's not the last time you're going to hear from Dragon Quest in this list. Uh, moving on to the Super Nintendo. A lot of people would consider this to be the golden age of JRPGs, and it's really kind of hard to argue against the that was introduced in uh, Final Fantasy 2, i.e. 4. Before that, um, it just made things... You, you really had to think a lot quicker and... and <laughs> Nothing was worse than trying to find that right magic spell in that huge list of magic spells as uh, you're getting pummeled and everybody's waiting their turn for you to uh, get up in that. Such a great story. All those characters and uh, the, one of the ultimate bad guys in Kefka laughing the entire time. Uh, no JRPG list. I can't imagine a top 10 list without Chrono Trigger in it. Um, we all have spoken the glories of Chrono Trigger for so many years. Whether you talk about the cast of characters, the Dragon Ball, Cory Tariyama influenced visuals, the uh, powerhouse of talent behind this one at Squaresoft at the time. But for me, one of the things that truly sets it apart and has been hard to duplicate since then is the battle system. Uh, implementing the best of Final Fantasy VI is uh, with um, those just <laughs> the team up attacks made that game so great. The area effects, I mean, they just did so many things so well, all while weaving this epic time traveling uh, tale that hasn't really been eclipsed since then. You throw in the multiple endings, um, super tough boss fights, and just that ultimate twist of, um, you know, that bad guy you're trying to get the whole time is actually somebody that ends up joining your party. I mean, just phenomenal. Through and through. And if I spoiled something for you there, why have you not played this game yet? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for every few to play a game that came out in what 95 or whatever. So that is <laughs> I don't feel like that's really my fault if, if you hadn't played Chrono Trigger uh, quite yet. Um, I believe that's all of our Super Nintendo. Obviously plenty of other ones could have made this one. Uh, like I said, I will share this list for you guys. Uh, my completed list and you'll kind of see like um, I've got all of them listed, and then I've got a dash beside the ones that kind of made that first cut, and then stars are beside my top, top ones, and there's quite a few of them that uh, could have made it onto that. So I believe next will be our PlayStation 1. Do we only have one on there? Wow, that's hard to hard to believe. Um, that made the final cut. And actually, it was... Sukunin 2, or Suikoden, <laughs> I've always been, uh, you could pronounce it either way, it's just fine. Um, it was, personally, it was tough to go between either part 5 and this, but I believe I can make a stronger case for 2, and it's because of that story. Um, what? <laughs> you never saw that twist coming? Um 
yeah, just such a great, great bad guy. The Sukunum 1 was a fine, fine game, and they took everything about it, same system, and made an infinitely better game. Um, to this day, even throughout any of the Sukunum titles, I've never been able to collect all 108 Stars of Destiny, but it didn't stop me from trying and loving to try to do that each and every time. Um, I've got no problem with putting that one on this list. There are certainly other PlayStation titles that were right on the cusp of making it on there and just couldn't quite nudge their way on. Um, it, is, it is what it is. So let's move on. And I believe we'll go to the PlayStation 2. And one of the games that kind of got me at just the right time, I'd played Persona 3. It almost made the list. But you kind of got to give a nod to Persona 4. Um, I liked 3's dark story a little bit more than the uh, the bubbly part 4, although it does have plenty of darkness uh, to it. I just felt like 4 was a a better version of that game. Um, slightly better visuals. Um, and then you can't talk about Persona 4 without talking about Golden and kind of its, you know, perfect form, unfortunately. Uh, I played it on PlayStation 2 and then played it on the Vita again. And we'll probably ultimately play this one on Steam in the future too. It's just such a good game. There's hardly anything you could really say negative about it, other than sometimes it's obnoxiously bubbly. <laughs> and of course, that high school setting is going to off-put some people, uh, no matter what. Um, also, on this game, on this list from PlayStation 2 is Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, of all the games in my life, uh, you've probably heard me say this before. I rarely play games twice. Um, it's usually got to take a definitive edition or a second version of it for me to play through it again. And I distinctly remember um, playing through this one multiple times, uh, going through those Dragorian trials at the very end, and literally in an age before there was trophies and platinum trophies for doing everything in the game. I was doing everything in this game that I could possibly do, and I distinctly remember playing through it at least three times. Now, some of you guys are going to say, what? I played through blah, 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 20 times in my life. Well, fantastic. <laughs> uh, like I said, I don't do that. So for me to have played through a game three times is speaking to the quality of that game. I also own it on 3DS and plan to play through it again on there. Um, that that game was so quirky, but at the same time, uh, absolutely gorgeous for what the PlayStation was doing, PlayStation 2 was doing at the time, along with those fully orchestrated soundtrack. Uh, just there'd be times, even at at that time, that you would just sit sit there. And you'd listen to the music, and look at the world, and you were just entranced. And oddly enough, you know, this that game makes a list even though you had no party options. In the original release, it was just the four party members. They did add the um, extra playable ones in the 3DS release, which I thought was a good move. But very, very rare that you... Now, obviously, you might do that you might not pick different party members you might just stick with the original four or three or whatever it is however those four were so strong along you know with with the king and, and other uh, characters that were uh, with you through your journey it's very telling to how strong those four were considering they were all you had but yeah that was definitely up there and i look forward to playing that one again at some point um i don't have any games on here that are only on playstation 3 however no 
James list would be complete without some Cold Steel, right? And as much as I love Cold Steel 1, Cold Steel 2 was a better game overall. Um, it got away from some of the uh, more tedious parts of one with the school parts. I mean, those parts were great, and you have to have that to build up to what you see later on in the series. Um, but if we're talking about uh, representing the PlayStation 3, that's certainly one of the best examples of it. I ended up playing that one on the Vita as well, and that was a lot of fun, obviously. But yeah, that just taking all those characters, adding some new ones to it in addition to Class 7, um, really stood out that you didn't have, you weren't stuck with just those options. But then, you know, most of them grew quite a bit from part one, although they were kind of the same skill sets and they weren't changing what, what truly characters they were. It was uh, a much better game ultimately and something that I remember quite fondly in both my playthroughs. Uh, and then I, I guess a third playthrough on its PlayStation 4 version, which just made that much better. And uh, so we'll go straight from Cold Steel 2 to Cold Steel 3 on the PlayStation 4. Um, you guys know it was my JRPG of the year last year. Couldn't really think of anything that the game did wrong other than being a few hours too long. Kind of just kept going and going. There wasn't anything that would have cut out of the game. It was just... As you can a see long the middle, there are game. Um, Each tied to a there was a device. lot of story <laughs> that needed to be told there. There were some shocking Attacks, moments that uh, you You'll just are sitting there slack jawed at. Um, some circle. people with that move, you've you grown up with in this battle. series, and and if you go back to if even the arts, Sky series and Crossbell, these are there are characters in this game that have been around for a long, long time, and you start to see them well as, as the story as keeps going and going. Elements. And the only way to to really say it is, Cold Steel is a snowball rolling downhill that starts off. Crafts small and just builds and builds and builds character. until it's just Unlike this arts, giant thing at the very bottom and we're still not to the bottom of the mountain yet with Cold Steel 4 coming out in October nothing I can't say about Cold Steel 3 that I haven't already <laughs> said a couple of times before um, the last two games on my list if you're keeping track are also on PlayStation 4 and um, Dragon Quest 11 is on here. It was close. I, 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 I'll I tell you that it was the last one in. And only because of what it does in terms of Dragon Quest. Okay, It didn't reinvent anything in the JRPG world. It just did what Dragon Quest does. <laughs> the most beautifully it's done it and one of the best ways it's done it. I'm not going to say it's better. I don't even think it's the best Dragon Quest title. I'm not going to say that. However, its presentation of it is the best. Um, the only thing I would fault really in that and was solved with the Switch version of it is the fully or... or <laughs> why can't I say that word? Or orchestra. <laughs> We'll just go with that. The full orchestra soundtrack behind it. Um, I did like how they um, used all four party members running around the field on the Switch as well. That's a game I do plan to play at some point in time. However, I loved every minute of Dragon Quest XI and felt like a kid all over again while playing it. Beautifully done. And uh, like I said, can't wait to play it again. The last game on the list, and you may be a, a bit surprised that it's on here given my recent rant, you and that's Persona 5. Now. I'm not going to hold this against Being this game mercy. what happened to me at the end of Voil. That's not going to diminish my opinion really of the game final? itself. That's more on a design choice that I did not meet the criteria for doesn't change how awesome Persona 5 is. And for me, 
what makes it a top 10 of all time is the battle system and how they took a turn-based battle system that had been around for so long and other than adding things like an ATV, but if you've got just a pure turn-based where you line up and you have an order and so your speed of combat is determined by how fast you can go through menus and there's still a couple with your persona spells and stuff. The ability of each button being mapped out to a certain function is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it can make turn-based as fast as you really want it to be. Once you memorize and know what all those buttons are, it's just instinct. You're just going to go here, 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 here. And you can fly through battle as quickly as you could. Let's say just like a pure action RPG. It's much the same um, as that or something that forces quick and steady movement. Um, of course, with that style. The style, the music. I mean, I don't need to... Um, I don't need to sell you on how great Persona 5 is. Like I said, you might be surprised given my recent ramblings. However... I still have high, high admiration ourselves. for that game and uh, cannot wait to see where this series make it a guy ends thing. up going. And so that is my Makoto, top right? 10 JRPG Especially list. Um, it's not yours. It's not the industries. It's not sales. It's not critical meta, you know, Metacritic scores or whatever. This is my games that I've played, that I've loved. And I'd love to see your list. If you want to reply to uh, anywhere on the pages and show me yours, that's fine. That's great. I hope you've enjoyed my tons of it. But that'll do it for this podcast. I had a short podcast in mind. That's why I wanted to talk about this at the end to make it longer. And we end up going almost an hour. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget, back our Sunday special. We'll talk all about Final Fantasy IX and the 20 year anniversary. Be back here next Wednesday for more fun. There will be some good stories to talk about as well. My name is James Fisher. Thank you so much for listening to episode 122. We'll see you guys back here next time. Don't forget, get back out there and level up.